Good evening, everybody. I'd like to thank you, Manos and Manos, once again for inviting me. This is a great honor for me being here. So I was asked to talk about arthroscopic transosseous repair. So I'd like to start uh, uh, with a very quick overview on rotator cuff repair history. So let's say that everything started in 1944 with open transosseous repair, and then we slowly uh, switched to mini-open, first transosseous, then suture anchors, and then we switched to an all-arthroscopic approach with suture anchors, um, we developed uh, multiple configurations, single row, double row, transosseous equivalent, and we compare all this, figure, uh, this configuration. And now, I think it's quite funny, because if the first biomechanical studies just try to assess, just try to, um, to, to demonstrate that uh, uh, suture anchor repair were comparable to open transosseous or, trans or uh, traditional transosseous, quote unquote. Now, most recent uh, uh, biomechanical studies just try to say that arthroscopic transosseous are comparable to uh, single row, double row, or transosseous equivalent, so to su all arthroscopic technique with suture anchors. And I think it's a funny story that we are going back to the beginning. So, Regardless the technique and the approach we will use, uh, we aim to get a perfect repaired calf. And what does it mean, a perfect repaired calf? It means that we want a stable construct from a biomechanical standpoint. We want a very good function. That means uh, unhappy patients. That means uh, a patient with a full recovery of the range of motion, a patient with uh, all the reco uh, strength recovery, and that is able to return to work and sport activity. And even if we are in the 2020, we still are hoping for a biological healing. That will be a perfect calf. But let's start with biomechanics. What are the biomechanical characteristics we are looking for? We are looking for a large contact area, high contact pressure, high initial fixation strength, and stable contract, and of course, a low tension repair. And what do we learn from biomechanical studies up to now? According uh, uh, with my previous, uh, with the previous speaker, we can say that we are all agreed that double row repair Repair and specifically the transosseous equivalent, for sure are the best construct from a biomechanical standpoint because they have higher failure loads, lower gap formation, and the suture bridge, so the transosseous equivalents also have an eye contact pressure even compared to standard double draw constructs. So we can say that our comparison tonight will be uh, for uh, transosseous equivalent and arthroscopic transosseous. And when we talk arthroscopic transosseous, we're just saying that we are looking for a way to, to perform some bone tunnel. But once we got the suture in the tunnel, we can apply for multiple configuration, starting from simple suture to meson Allen to H-shaped configuration that is, has been described by the group of Professor Castagna that is here, and the e more complex configuration like the X-box. Why I'm telling you this? Because when we look biomechanical studies, uh, uh, we need to focus on what kind of configuration we are comparing. Otherwise, we're going to get the idea that uh, biomechanical studies just show controversial result, and I think it's not. Because we say that if we compare transosseous equivalent and transosseous repair by using simple repair, surely transosseous equivalent uh, uh, look better. Show, um, they show higher mean failure load compared to uh, simple repair. But if we compare two similar constructs, such as transosseous equivalent and the X-bus configuration, results are almost the same, so they are both strength and stable. And according to what I'm saying, a recent uh, meta-regression analysis, systematic review and meta-regression analysis of 40 cadaveric studies just say that what makes the difference are not the anchor, not the bone tunnel, but the number of suture and the suture limbs that just pass through the calf. So it looks like the more, the better. Um, but talking about suture, so suture configuration probably makes a difference from a biomechanical standpoint. Let's see some um, surgical steps, actually. Uh, to perform a transosseous repair, we can use uh, uh, different devices. Uh, um, this one is the Taylor suture, which is basically a carved needle uh, that go from the lateral aspect to the, um, from the lateral aspect of the greater tuberosity to the footprint, and then we use just a passing suture to pass all our suture. Usually I, I pass three suture. And as I was saying, we can just make any configuration we want from single repair to more complex configuration. 
um, another surgical device that uh, we can easily use is the Arthur Tunneler device. It's uh, similar, it just works in the opposite way. So the first tunnel I drill is a um, vertical tunnel uh, just where I usually put my suture anchors. And then my, uh, this is just a dilator. And then I put the device <coughs> just in the first tunnel and the device uh, is perfectly fit with the greater tuberosity. I drill my horizontal tunnel and then I retrieve my, uh, my passing suture. I can perform as many tunnels as I need. So in this case, I will perform a couple of tunnel as you can see in a second. Yes, that's the, sec the second tunnel. And then sometimes before uh, not tying, I just uh, uh, perform some microfracture or nanofracture. In this case, I will perform um, an X-bus configuration. So I will pass through the calf my, um, my passing suture actually. And through the passing suture, I will pass all my suture through the calf and through the bone tunnel in uh, one step or two step in this case, because I got two tunnels. And after that, I'll just need to um, tie the suture according the, uh, the Xbox configuration, which is that. So from a functional standpoint, from a clinical standpoint, I will show you, I can show you actually only two studies, which are the only two randomized clinical trials available on this topic, because all the other studies are just case serious. They say, okay, transosis equivalent just reach very good clinical results. But let's see a, compar a comparison in a randomized clinical trial. Um, uh, this, uh, this has been conducted by an Italian group. They compare 35 single row repair versus 31 transosseous repair. Unfortunately, sample size is not very high. And uh, from a clinical standpoint, uh, at the final evaluation uh, and an average follow-up of 40 months, they say no difference. Uh, what they found, they found only a significant difference in pain management. They say that uh, in the first three weeks, or at least uh, three weeks after surgery, uh, pain was um, was inferior, was uh, uh, um, person, people who underwent and transosseous repair just get uh, a lot of less pain. And from uh, healing standpoint, no difference actually to the MRI. Next study is quite different. They compare only 10 transosseous equivalent uh, uh, repair versus 11 transosseous. I know the, the sample size is even lower in this case. And um, they look for difference in vascular pattern. What does it mean? Then each patient underwent an ultrasound evaluation and one month, two months, three, and six months postoperatively. And they found that at least for the first three months after surgery, um, the blood flow was uh, uh, more evident in the transosseous repair, probably because it, cam it came up from the bone tunnel as well. So they, uh, th they say that there is a potential uh, biological healing increased by the transosseous repair. Let's sum up what advantages we can get with transosseous repair. Uh, actually, if we are repairing small tears, so we need a single tunnel, and if you use one of the devices that I show you, probably uh, it's cheaper if you perform a single row repair. But if you, are, if you need to repair a medium to large tear, so um, maybe two or more tunnels, which means also uh, at least a couple of anchors if you do a single row, or four anchors if you do a double row repair, surely transosseous repair can be considered cheaper, so they are cost effective. What about the techniques? As you see, even in my hands, the, it is not so difficult to perform the, the bone tunnel. So especially if you do simple suture, the technique is very easy. Uh, if you choose a different configuration, it could be a little bit more demanding, but I mean, no, not so big. For a biological standpoint, we can say that uh, from the tunnel, we can, uh, we can get bone marrow from the tunnel, we can also add the microfracture, and this is another advantage, but what makes the difference probably is the revision. If you have to revise uh, a case with transosseus, it's surely easy uh, because you don't have any implant. Are there 
any concern when you um, uh, when you look at transosteal repair? Sure, we have a couple of concerns. One could be bone quality, so osteoporotic bone and tunnel angle. Let's see. Bone quality could be easily solved just by adding an implant. I have to say, um, different type have been described. So button, uh, small fish, um, the elite, uh, even a knotless anchor, any kind of augmentation uh, through the lateral tunnel. And for the tunnel angle, what we can say, two problems. One is a bone bridge. But if you use one of the devices that I show you, you don't have to care about the bone bridge. Uh, I cited a study that, that all we, uh, of course, talk about open transosseous. And they say that the bone bridge is sufficient when tunnel are placed at least 10 millimeter distal to the tip of the greater tuberosity. But I, as I said, it's not an issue if you if you use a precise device. If you use an handmade device like an ACL guide, for example, so you need to pay attention to tunnel angle. And so even the um, axillary nerve is a potential. There is a potential risk. I say potential because no reports uh, are present in the literature. But uh, there is a study that showed that in order to be safe, to stay at least five millimeter away from the axillary nerve, you need to drill your angle at least 60 degrees agree with the horizontal axis. So in conclusion, can we avoid implant? Uh, yes, we can. Can we? Uh, we can avoid implants. Basically, from a biomechanical standpoint, we show that they're, they're totally comparable to the transosseous equivalent. From a functional standpoint, uh, results are comparable to current technique. Even if we, li if, if of course we need larger sample size. From a biological standpoint, bone marrow from the tunnel looks like uh, uh, something we need to pay attention. And nevertheless, easy revision is something we need to to, to think about. About. Thank you, and I hope to see you in Milan uh, for the ESCA meeting. Please, 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 don't forget to like our, our Facebook page, the ESCA ESA. Thank you.